Sup transgenders, it's Makiana, and I'm back with a consistent upload schedule. And in this video, I'll be talking about one of my favorite music groups over the past couple years, and their name is The Haunted Mound. And if you don't know who The Haunted Mound is, they're an extremely talented music collective of guys who do lots of things like rapping, producing, graphic designing, video editing, videography, photography, fashion designing, they even ship their own clothes. They mix their own shit. They, be, they basically do everything that you could think of to do with music. They do it themselves. It's really freaking cool. DIY as fuck. I like it. Some of them even play guitar. Like, they're versatile as hell. They can do pretty much everything, bruh. And you know, Haunted Mind is just like any other fan group. You got the fat nigga. The dark skinned fellow. That one nigga who's really short. That one nigga who's really tall. The nigga that'll sell you fitting all this cocaine. The nigga who has a mullet. The nigga who doesn't blink. The nigga with questionable allegations. The Welsh nigga that's addicted to Memphis rap. And finally, the guy that I'll be talking about today. The Irish nigga that stays on a farm in the middle of nowhere. And his name is Buckshot. And as someone who's been listening to Haunted Mouse since the friggin' Gravehouse days, like, I'm a fan, okay? I've been listening to these niggas since, like, late, late 2019. I've got their fucking merch. I got every fucking Cemetery CD, so... I'm just saying this for those Haunted Mound super fans who, who are going to think I'm some kind of like wave rider or some shit. Anyways, back to the original topic of the video. I 100%, 1000% wholeheartedly believe that Buckshot is the best member that Haunted Mound has ever had. Like, yeah, even better than Ghost Mound, even better than Cemetery. Even taking into account the body of work that Cemetery has put together, he's still better than Cemetery. Even better than Small Cemetery, better than Black Cemetery. That was a joke, by the way. I, I love both Hack with Down and uh, Turnabout. That was a joke. Anyways, when Buckshot first debuted on the song Strawman, a lot of people were like, damn, this guy's just like trying to be Ghost Mountain or some shit. And I can understand that because like it's not like he was doing anything different or unique to what Cemetery was doing, you know, talking about being in a forest and fucking true religion and shit. But man, like you cannot deny that this song's an absolute banger. Like the hook on this song is crazy, it's super catchy, and his flow, like I know for a fact that he's copying some kind of Chief Keef flow. I don't know what song it's on, I feel like I should since I listen to Chief Keef so much, but I don't know what song it's from. It goes hard though, he's flowing his ass off. Like he doesn't do anything wrong on this song, it's just that people know that Ghost Mountain isn't going to come back, so they just think anyone who's added to the group after this is just going to be some, some kind of uh, Ghost Mountain replacement. And his second song that he dropped was, I believe, Treehouse. And this shit right here is like an absolute, just a black metal banger. It's got this bathory ass cover. Another banger ass hook. And we're going to see how good this man Buckshot's hook game is. He never misses with a hook. The lyrics on her are also just super black metal-y. With lyrics referring to like summoning ghosts, setting hexes, self-harm, and just setting things on fire for no reason. Yeah, Buckshot actually talked about burning down a forest way before Cemetery did. And the funny thing is... Buckshot is actually on the song Forest Fire, which is on Rainbow Bridge 3, and it came out a month later, so you can tell that uh, Cemetery stole this man's swag completely. And speaking of Rainbow Bridge 3, this song right here is pretty much what Rainbow Bridge 3 sounds like. It's got that super distorted, blown out sound. Deep fried is the word that I'm looking for. And it's the sound that Haunted Mind would soon become known for. But I want to get into the mixtape that Buckshot dropped in early 2022 called Burning Barn. Which, in my honest opinion, is the best solo release to come out of the Haunted Mound so far. I follow, we fly. I follow, we fly. Keep out in my room and I can't get out. I follow, we fly. Keep out and be a me coming down. Now, the first song on this album named Keep Out starts with this hard ass guitar riff, which is done by someone named Asa Nisa Masa. And apparently they've done guitar for a couple other Haunted Mound songs before, so shout out to them. But anyways, when this beat drops, you hear those fat witch house synths. <laughs> the lyrics on the hook are a direct reference to a 17th century plague painting, which depicts the effects the Black Plague has had on London. So he's basically just comparing his mental state to like the Black Plague. He doesn't want anyone to come near him or he'll contaminate them. So he's just trapped himself in his room so he can do Adderall and of course drink because he's Irish. And in turn, this has put him in like a state of extreme paranoia. 
he's going to like some kind of schizophrenic episode. He thinks he's being gang stalked. So yeah, the lyrics are like really good and really creative because I never would have thought that someone would be referencing a 17th century plague painting, but here we are. So the second song, Revenant, starts off with part of a verse being played at the beginning of the song. Clearly this guy's a lot like me, listening to a lot of Chief Keef because that's a Chief Keef thing. I mean, even though that's not like something he invented, but that's what Chief Keef used to do. I know it because of Chief Keef. The lyrics consist of him talking about sniffing glue and vomiting on his true religion. You know, the worst possible thing to ever happen to someone. Staying up so long you start hallucinating. And also, fuck every cop. This one is a banger for real, bro. It's just flowing hard as hell. No, seriously, like his flow is reminiscent of like a Lord of Infamous triplet flow. So shout out to him for paying respect to some old school 90s Memphis horrorcore. That shit go hard as hell. Haunted Hayride song number three is probably my favorite song about drink driving. With lyrics consisting of breaking red lights, speeding through stop signs, and of course, driving the wrong way down the highway. Just another Friday night with the boys, honestly. Like, who else in Haunted Mound has this much of a disregard for public safety? None of them, honestly. And also, fuck the police. All of them. All those pigs. Song number four, Barn Owls, is the song with Cemetery on it, and, you know, it's basically what you would expect a Cemetery song to sound like. You know, box cutters, true religion, oh yeah, cop killing. Also, this beat, produced by Oscar18 and Cemetery, it is so hard. Like, these guys do this witch house trap thing so perfectly. Like, it's one of the best beats on the album. And the next song is called Over the Hills, a song which was the lead single for the album, and it mixes Irish folk, trap, and witch house. Just a super unique song. It legitimately sounds like it was recorded on like a farm. It's, it's I, I love how grimy it is. I mean, that's basically what this whole album sounds like, but you know what I mean. It's got your sad boy emo lyrics. It's got your, um, you know, lyrics about hibernation, you know, because we're mammals, right? So we have to hibernate too. And of course, you wake up in October so you can uh be spooky and celebrate Halloween, you know? And, you know, he talks about living in your walls, you know? He's stalking you. You know, waiting for you to fall asleep so uh, he can uh, eat your pizza rolls and the Adderall in your medicine cabinet. And also drink the whiskey that's in your fridge. And next up, we've got Hollow Ground with Cemetery. And this song is just like Buckshot just going like, dude, I would do anything to get drugs man like he talks about stealing people's credit cards and shit raiding people's medicine cabinets like train spotting style and now that i think about it buckshot is like a real life train spotting character except not scottish he's irish and one thing i would like to say is like i just love the way buckshot says things and like words himself all his lyrics just seem so believable to me like, he raps about the same similar stuff that Cemetery talks about, but it's just like, is Cemetery really out here slicing up throats with box cutters and killing cops? I don't think so. So yeah, I'm like listening to this shit like, damn, this motherfucker will take my excedrin, bro. Also, no shade at Cemetery, he absolutely kills his verse too. But one of the songs that isn't produced by uh, Oscar18, this is produced by Grimore and Cemetery. And the eight of ways on this one are absolutely booming. They sound like atomic bombs, bro. Sawmill is one of the more underrated songs on here. 
mostly because it's pretty tame in comparison to the other songs on the album. You know, the beat's good, super witch housey, you know, as most of the songs on the album are. But the wordplay on this album is kind of more comparable to like DSBM. And I really appreciate that because it's quite the change of pace. And I feel like this song deserves a bit more love. Up next we have If I Had a Gun. And Buckshot basically describes things he would do if he had a gun. Like murder a cop or commit suicide. Yeah, you know, I'm glad Buckshot is a guy that I can really relate to. And he comes back to talking about drugs and the effect that it's having on him. You know, necrosis, tuberculosis, psychosis, all of these things are caused by drugs. I think. And he talks about how he just feels like shit. And I'm sure he wishes that he could like take a nap or something, but there's so much Adderall in his body that he, he doesn't even blink anymore. And I don't want to keep going on about how I think this is the best beat on the album, but bro, this has got to be one of the best beats on the album. That witch house synth is absolutely screaming, bro. Next up, we got Long Walk Home with Turnabout. This is another song that talks about like the effect that drugs have had on him. He's disassociating, going through psychosis, describes his head as like dead weight, hanging tied to his spine. Like the word play on this song is just absolutely immaculate. Like you can, like he really describes how he's feeling and it, it feels so real. Like I said before, it's that believability. It really feels like he's describing a scene that has actually happened to him. And Turnabout's verse carries on with like the same themes. He absolutely shells his verse. Like I love it. This has got to be the best feature on the album. Now the song In The Morning is possibly my favorite solo Haunted Mound song ever. Like it's legitimately hard to describe the sound, but like it's like emo rap, witch house, folk, country, and trap all rolled into one. It's like a mixture of Cleaver Valley, Tooth Taker, and Coil, like if that makes sense. Like bro, this song is absolute perfection. The hook is crazy. The lyricism is absolutely immaculate. And the beat is just amazing. It is legitimately everything you could ever want out of like a Haunted Mountain song. Right here. And for the last song, Break the Dawn. A song about staying up all night and not being able to sleep because of Adderall and I, I don't know, friggin' ether? I don't know what Solvent's bruh does. And the way he describes dealing with like schizophrenia and uh, disassociation, it's very interesting. I mean, he's so creative with his wordplay. Honestly, a very extremely relatable song, to be honest. The staying up all night part, not the um, Solvent abuse part. I don't, I, don't do, I don't do that. And that's the review. Like I said, this is the best solo project that Haunted Mound has put out so far. And this is going to sound like a very weird comparison, but I don't know why my mind made this connection. Buckshot's lyricism on this album is somewhat comparable to Danny Brown's lyricism on Atrocity Exhibition. Like, hear me out. The way they talk about drugs, right? They obviously describe the highs of it, right? How you feel when you're high, but when you're not high, they describe it as just the worst thing ever. Like, like the fiending to get high again, the schizophrenia, the hallucinations, just all of the fucked up mental health aspects of it. They talk about it in explicit detail. Also the extreme over the top nihilism with bits of dark humor sprinkled in. I don't know, maybe I'm the one who's tripping, but it just seems like such an obvious comparison to make and I've never seen anyone make it. But it's just how I'm interpreting the music, so it's whatever to be honest, bro. And one last thing I really appreciate about this album is how it takes it takes the old Haunted Mound sound, like the super grimy witch house. Like it makes it sound like it's being recorded on like a trailer park or on like, or in like a farm. And it mixes it with like the new sound, which is more like trap slash drill inspired, along with that like deep fried sound. 
it mixes the old and new together it makes it perf perfection honestly so yeah thanks for watching the review uh shit like comment subscribe you know thanks <laughs>